The founding fathers of the nation dreamt of a young developing country which was going to be the envy of the neighboring countries. Sadly, soon after independence, the country's developmental agenda was compromised by negative ethnicity, corruption, and equal distribution of national resources, political rivalries, and many other social, political, and economic vices. This have had a negative impact on the nation. The results were evident. Bad roads, illiteracy, poverty, malnutrition, lack of clean water, among many challenges. Successive governments have not succeeded in harnessing the combined power of the ethnic and religious diversity of the people of Kenya to effectively deal with these issues. Kenyans were given a new lease of life with the development and promulgation of a new constitution in 2010. The new constitution gave plenty of hope to Kenyans. Finally, there was a constitution which gave power and resources to the people of Kenya through the county devolution mechanism. Majority of Kenyans were happy with the huge economic, social and political gains to be realized with devolution. But sadly, this hope has been replaced with despair and acrimony as many of the regions in Kenya got bogged with internal wrangling and incessant power struggles which has seen a major slowdown of the development agenda in majority of the counties. We are our own enemies as Kenyans because we don't seem to value anything Kenyan. We could start by appreciating where God placed us in Kenya. I wish most of our leaders would travel other, other countries. It's unfortunate that it's foreigners who appreciate Kenya much more than Kenyans do. There is something called greed. I wish I know how it crept into, it, it, it did creep in our, in our community because greed is very bad. Before elections, everybody is afraid. Is that true? Yeah. Go to Nairobi. These children are living together. They even don't know. Some of them even don't know which tribe they belong to. Yes. But they come to political times, mm. seasons, that is when they start mentioning about Iluos and Karijis and Hikuyus and what have you. Today our country is bleeding. And most of the problems that we have are related to our moral values. If our moral values are right, then there will be no challenges that we are facing. Ordinary Kenyans have cried out for help and have been looking to religious and faith leaders to provide leadership and the necessary direction for the country to get back on track. Uh, the Kenya we want, really speaking, is simple. If we have the philosophy of uh, being not being selfish, being sincere. If we are sincere, we are not selfish. We want, as all religions preach, you should do what you, somebody else will want to do to you. That is to say, to do good. And the issue is to change our attitudes as religious leaders, to change our attitudes for the better. So we have to open up our minds and then we have to see, because whatever we have to tell people, we have to embrace it first as leaders. And then if we do it, then it will be positive to these people whom we lead, and they'll take it positively. It is only the church still who can look at the government and say, government, you need to be accountable. Because if anything, um, I believe so much, and it's true, it is true, that the church does what is commonly right. Especially the clergy should come up together and try to boost the, the social life, especially, especially from the family setup. One of the institutions that has managed to respond to this cry has been the Inter-Religious Council of Kenya, IRCK, in partnership with a leading DOSH Catholic organization, is implementing a project dubbed Social Transformation Project. The project seeks to mobilize the moral and spiritual resources of religious leaders to encourage public discussions on the underlying causes and possible solutions to the prevailing social acrimony in the country. 
The overall goal of this initiative is to contribute to the adoption of a robust and definite social and religious values framework by all Kenyans for social harmony, economic development and general well-being. Part of the root cause of the problem is the systematic erosion of the national values as spelled out by the Constitution. These values, which are religious, societal, cultural and national, in the Constitution are 17 in number, and IRCK, using a panel of theologians drawn from various faith communities, narrowed this down to five. The values are sacrifice and contribution to the common good, two, sharing and cooperation, three, working and growing together, four, stewardship and the management of life talents and responsibilities, five, shared humanity, Ubuntu, this set of five values were carefully worded and were backed up by a set of questions to help their interpretation for better understanding. We need to be courageous, that is one thing that we have learned. We need to be patriotic, be charismatic and be principled. IRCK set up a process to review this in eight different regions of Kenya as follows. North Rift, Western, Central Nyanza, South Nyanza, Kiambu, Nyeri, Central Eastern and Lower Eastern. Sacrifice and contribution to the common good. All Kenyans should be prepared to make personal contribution for our common growth. We threw away our extended family which um, had sacrifices for the better of the family. If you are well to do, you you sacrifice something small for the betterment of the rest of the extended family. Now, as we have progressed in our independence, the, the extended family became now um, nepotism. And, and, and it ceased to be sacrifice for the good of society to nepotism. How can we make Kenyans contribute and they sacrifice themselves, go to the extra mile so that they can promote the common good for everyone, not just for their families or for their tribes or their clan or their religion, but for the Kenyans. As faith-based organizations, we live by example so that the other Kenyans and the community that is behind us can see what we, what we are desiring and what we hope to get from them so that they copy from us. But at least the religious leaders, we should not fear and we should be focused and bold enough and courageous enough and become charismatic in one way or another so that we can make it at least to show the people the way forward and also guide our people. We look at ourselves today, 50 years down the line, one of the things that speaks so loudly to all of us as a nation is that we have drifted so far away from our values. But we need another set of values which defines us as a country and which we can hold each other to account to. Two, sharing and cooperation. We need to inculcate a culture of sharing resources and power and all that God has endowed us with equitably. The resources of, of, of a country are diverse, like the talents. The biggest resource we have as a country is our people, the, the, the youth, their energy, their creativity. So, so, and how we harness that youth and that creativity is very key. Ukiona mama akitoa chakula kwa mtoto wake, anawekea iko. Hakuna mtoto anayekiwa zaidi. Mama anajua mtoto huyu kiasi chake na wote wanatosheka. Lakini leo mama yetu Kenya na watu wameanza kushare differently. Kuna watu wanapendelewa Kwa resources flani, wengine wanapunjwa. So we are saying, if we want to live in humanity, we must share our resources equally among all the people. Uh, we believe they are minerals. But then, uh, if they were to be used for the common good of the nation, we find there is tagging and a lot of bureaucracy such that uh, we are not seeing the, the benefits that should be emanating from such. And unfortunately, the Kenya we see today is because we have deviated from that issue called religious and the belief 
of the laws of God. Three, working and growing together. We need to focus on wealth creation and include every Kenyan in this process. The new government of the county, most of the employees are people from one cluster. The other sections don't have any people employed. Now what do another do? Now ki reason yo and advertisement tokea wapi ya kuandika watu wezi kupata. I've tried it myself, but I've never even got to the bottom of it. And the way to deal with the tribalism is appreciating each other. It is actually unity in diversity. So I think unless now the, we as religious leaders should emphasize to the government, put proper measures, stiff measures, to make everybody fear any engagement with corruption. Nile sisi kuja pamoja, inatuonesha kuwa Kenya yetu ni watu waishi pamoja, na upendo, watu watangamane katika kuendesa mambo kwa njia ambayo inatakikana. When we team up as interfaiths and we're able to work together, me, I have confidence that something can be done. As you know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts completely. And therefore, when people are put in power, whatever level they are, whether it's in a school committee, whether it's a, it's a, it's a deep committee, whether it's a bursary committee, whether it is a members of parliament, the, 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 the power that they enjoy has the corrupting uh, 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 capability. And the, the role of religious leaders is to keep all the people in power at whatever level in check. Four, stewardship and the management of life, talents and responsibilities. Religious leaders defined possession as blessings for sharing, position as a guide and talent, a tool to be used for nation building. We have been educating religious leaders on, on social budgeting and the human rights based to budgeting so that uh, they, 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 they are able to engage and interact with the people responsible at the county level in allocating resources to ensure that these resources are allocated to the prioritized needs of the local people. Uh, if the community is, involved, is not involved uh, in these matters of budget and uh, what they are planning to do, then they just see what is being done. They have not been involved uh, satisfactorily because they need to participate, to participate in all areas. In their planning, in the execution of their plans, the public has not been actually incorporated as they are required. We abolish the whole thing about electing the governors. We get them through the nomination in the correct process. We get, uh, we fed this person. Is he correct in terms of discipline and everything? Does he have the management skills to manage the whole county and the resources? Yes, let him, let him get the job. Because it will be even easy to recall him. Because he, he has got the mandate from the government and from the people through the fetting and through that discipline and respect of the qualifications. Shared humanity, Ubuntu, we all need to recognize the sanctity of human life and uphold the rule of law, human right, human dignity, equity and equality. We are all human beings and we should work together as far as humanity is concerned. What Takikuyu is suffering in Moranga you discover is the same Anandi is suffering, is the same as Andigo is suffering in the coast. The problem is their political leaders will politicize their problems for their own benefits. So we are going to go to the inch and we are going to be able to fight for the people of the rice. And we are going to be able to fight for the people of the rice who are in the same place. Because they are the same place. Lakini wakianza kulilea kabila zao na sisi huku wananchi tunawafuata. <laughs> Tukiadapt mankind. Mm. Tutaweza kuishi everywhere. Yeah. Ukimwangalia yoyote unamwona kama mdogo wako mm. ama mkubwa wako. Mm. Na heshima kwake mm. lakini si kuangaliana kwa jicho ukijiangalia mwenyewe usijiangalie kwa jicho la ukabila. Mm. Na nafikiri ndio tutaweza kupigana na hizi changamoto. Remove the greed Kenya is the place to be. There is no better place to live in than in Kenya. The Social Transformation Project has recorded several accomplishments. Firstly, 
IRCK has managed to create a partnership with the National Anti-Corruption Campaign Steering Committee. Secondly, it has received support and buy-in from over 240 religious leaders spread in eight regions. Last but not least, it has managed to actively involve theologians in the planning and running of the county dialogue meetings. One of the major expected deliverables from this process is a handbook of national values. IRCK believes that the inculcation of these refined values into the Kenyan fabric will enable us to get closer to the nation that we all so badly desire.